Hey! <laughs> Not what you expected, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, my name's Amber Nicole. Um, I am pretty categorically a maker, artist, person. Um, this, um, which you, you won't be surprised to learn, is a is a custom helmet cover I made uh, last year, actually for my for my skiing trip, uh, or two years ago rather. Not I didn't go skiing last year in in the the beginnings of COVID. Um, but uh, yeah, so I got my helmet on under here, and you know you love it. Uh, the, it's it's based on like the Russian style fur hats that like tie up like this. You know, it's got I got some nice paracord in there, so it's real durable. Um, and I made it by um, yeah, I made it by uh, just measuring the helmet and. Um, you know, making a cover. Uh, I happen to have the blue lying around. I didn't pick it. It's just the color I had. Um, I always thought of it as like a blue Yeti looking thing. I, I, I always thought of myself as more of a, a blue Yeti. Um, and, uh, but uh, apparently um, the, the ski patrol started calling me cotton candy. So I'll go with cotton candy, um, cause that's friendly. Um, but I have some m modifications I need to make to this. Um, I'll walk you through the project just a smidge so you can see how cool it really, really is. Um, there's a helmet under here. It is copper painted because the first time I modified my helmet, I decided to paint it. It didn't go very well, hence the cover. Um, it's kind of weird looking, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, this is the amazingness of my helmet cover. I don't realize how it, not quite symmetric it is when I'm wearing it. Which way do I need to go? Oh, I need to go the other way. Here we are. Here we are. See that? Yeah. It's like that. Um, yeah. Because I'm this cool. This is what I ski in. <laughs> I know. That's why you join, right? This is what you want to see in your life. <laughs> So this, this is my, my, my cover that I wear on my ski helmet. Um, and I was just telling the story. I made it two years ago, pre COVID for my regular skiing. Um, I think of it as a blue Yeti, but welcome Dom. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, ski patrol on the mountain, uh, start calling me cotton candy. So I'll take it. This is a helmet. It's just, it's not real fur. Um, let's see, how much can I show you of this without like boring you? Uh, but I made it. So I made this cover because I really love skiing in my Russian hat. Um, I have, I've got a couple like that, you know, the kind with like the flaps. I always can think of it as a Russian hat. The kind with the flaps that you can tie up on top like I just did with this. I'll do it again. I'll untie it. Um, so, you know, it's got the top here. You can untie it, bring it down, and you got the ear flaps to keep you nice and warm. Um, yeah, see, and it's adorable. Um, and it's enormous going down the mountain. Like the helmet is like as, as wide as my, as my shoulders. Can you see that? Um, so yeah. <laughs> Ushanka, ooh, somebody with real knowledge. Thanks, Dom. Ushanka, did I say it right? Yeah, so, um, my my dad spent some time in Russia um, and came back with a black one that he he likes to wear skiing and I've made a gray one and a pinkish red one that I like to wear but you know with all the accidents and the realization that skiing really is an extreme sport a helmet is a good idea so and plus I do ski in the trees um, <laughs> yeah exactly I, I thank you for the the name Ushanka um, so I have a cotton candy Ushanka. That's what we'll re rename this one. I put it on YouTube. We'll call it cotton candy Ushanka, huh? Um, oh, that reminds me. I need to make sure my previous video is loading to YouTube. Hold on, I gotta do that real quick because they disappear on, on Twitch and it makes me sad um, when they disappear and I haven't told it to upload to YouTube yet. I don't think anyone really watches them on YouTube, but I put them there so that anyone can watch them if they want. And um, 
Yeah, here we go. I need to do that. So, um, do, 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 content. Here we are. Don't lose this one. Let's put it on YouTube. Export. So, last week's, uh, we can call it like painting, watercolor, skiing, winter, uh, Vermont. There we go. There we go. Now I won't lose the video. Good stuff. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so I, I like to look unique on the mountain. Uh, most of growing up, I could fit into like these old ski suits that my mother and grandmother wore from the 70s. So I looked fabulous skiing down the mountain. I mean, I'm a good skier, but the suits, these 1970s suits with the fur hat, you know I look good. Um, and so I wanted to continue that with the fur hat. With more more modern equipment, those suits aren't particularly warm anymore. Um, and making sure I had a helmet underneath. Um, because safety. Safety first, right? We're scientists. I want to hold on to my brain. So, I created this. Um, Blue Ushanka. Blue Shanka? Blue Shanka. Mmm, maybe she'll have a name. Uh, cotton candy's not bad. So I have my ski goggles here and they do go around the um, helmet and they, there's this little flap here. I don't know if you can see this. This is part of the helmet that comes out through some holes I made in the helmet cover. Um, let's take the goggles off. Yeah. Do, do, do. I'll unclip them in the back. And you can see I'm going to have to pull this off. This little strap that holds the goggles onto the, uh, helmet. See that? And then the goggles come off. Here we are. You know they're cool. It's a good look for me. Um, do you ski dom or snowboard dom? Do you, do you get to go into the mountains in the snow? Uh, and then I made it to go on the helmet. Um, kind of based it on the pattern that I'd used for my other hats, but it was way too big to just kind of explode it. And it didn't really work. I ended up having to do a lot of like fudging of the sewing to get it to work beautifully. Um, so I'm gonna take it off. I don't need anything on the back to hold it on because that, that really just stays down right here. But then I pull it down and you're going to see this kind of helps with holding it down in the back. And then I've got here, this is what you, you don't necessarily see. Um, I put a, an elastic here to the top with a little hook to connect to the front of the, um, to the front of the helmet. Um, so it kind of, this hook just kind of goes right here, connects on, and that keeps the front down in front. Um, I think I'd like to add one or two more of these things. And you'll notice this strap um, is sewn here and tied in a knot and then sewn here and then here. So this was done live on the mountain because it just wasn't staying on the helmet very well. Um, so when I got, once I started moving and wind was blowing on it. So this is what holds it down. And the first time I sewed it in, it was too long and too stretchy. So then I went back in the next day that evening and sewed it down, um, tied a knot to shorten it and then just realized I just needed this. So the next ones that I sew on, I'm gonna put one and two here to keep it down when I pull the goggles up. Um, but I'm gonna add one more. I have this fabulous felt on the inside of these like really cute robots because they're adorable. You never learn skiing. So I don't remember learning to ski. <laughs> uh, my partner and I were talking about when we were skiing last Wednesday, um, how scary he found the lifts when he was learning to ski. And I never remember that. <laughs> I've been skiing since I could walk. Um, now I still have like techniques and I, I in, in high school and college I was still and still am working on those techniques to get better. Um, but skiing blacks and even double blacks, if I'm feeling strong that day, it is a possibility. Since my foot surgery, I haven't done a double black. I don't know that I have the strength for it anymore, but we'll find out one day. I'll work towards it. Um, but yeah, so this is, you know, it's massive if you just put it on your head, um, but it's perfect for a helmet. Um, yeah, so I made this. It needs some alterations, namely that elastic that I told you about. Um, and while these are wonderful ear flaps and do keep my ears warm, they do deaden some of the sound. So, uh, and sometimes they can be a bit too warm when you're skiing. So I want to work a second layer of ear protection into my helmet that will always be down and keep my ears uh, 
warm. What I did previously was just wear like a headband that kind of covered my ears. Um, but I would like it to be built into the helmet. Uh, in part because of COVID, I need to be able to get um, my mask on and off easier so that when I need to go into the lodge to go to the bathroom, it's not a problem. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a challenge. <laughs> you, you like to sit next to a fireplace and watch others ski. You know what? Those people are valuable. They make the drinks and they have them ready for you when you came, come in. Sometimes they even cook dinner. And you know what? When you've been skiing all day, those are the people you want in your ski crew. Um, there's nothing wrong with being someone who likes to lounge around in front of the fireplace. Um, not at all. Um, I, I, I enjoy coming back early sometimes and cooking. Um, cause eating, <laughs> cause eating when you're skiing is just nothing. There's nothing compares to the food. It's so good after you've been skiing all day. Exactly. Tea, hot cocoa, uh, cider, all of that. Warm it up, mold wine, whatever your jam is. And, um, yeah, yeah. Those people are valuable. You need those in your ski crew. Don't worry about it. Um, so yeah. Um, Oh, I lost my train of thought. Where was I going? Uh, ear protection, helmet. I'm going back to my helmet. Uh, so yes, I did. I, this helmet was pink once, um, which is baby pink is not my jam, but it was $25 and it was a good helmet. So I was like done. Um, and eventually in my adult life, uh, I painted it copper. And, uh, so I spray painted it and it, it went this paint, I took it completely apart, pulled all this out of it, and you can see all the cat hair. That kind of grosses me out. Um, anyways, it's in there. There's nothing I can do about it. Mirin's hairs are like darts, and they go into fabrics and just never come out. So I painted it, and then I added this splash of glitter, um, copper glitter right here. There were some problems. So I did, I may have cut it a little short, but ultimately this, the seal that I used on it didn't, cure in like the week that I had before uh, taking it on an airplane. And so everything that was strapped to it kind of stuck and left an impression. So you probably can't see it on the cameras. Um, how's this one? No, this one. So you probably can't see it on the cameras. And what cat hair turns up? Yeah, cats there for, if you have a cat, you have cat hair uh, forever. So you, yeah, there you go. You can even see the impression, like see of my goggles right here. Um, it just, the, the finish didn't have enough time to cure. And um, so that's a bummer. Uh, now I can see over time too, the finish has worn here um, from my helmet cover. Uh, it has some dings that aren't really actually from actual hits. I think it's where it dripped or melted next to the fire, drying out, um, all those kinds of things. I did sign it um, because I felt like this was a beautiful work of art when I finished it before I traveled with it in the airplane and it got all smushed and banged up. I did sign it. I know people are like, Ooh, what brand of helmet was that? <laughs> Is that? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I just signed it. Um, unfortunately, if you can also see this on camera, I don't know. Um, let's get it in the shine. Um, the the pen I used to sign it was was a paint pen, but apparently it was different than the spray paint, and it kind of repelled the sh the the shine, the gloss coat I put on the helmet. So I learned some things on this. See, I, and I made this like I don't know, ten years ago, and then eventually I put my brand on it because everyone needs to know my brand. I'm working on a patch. I, I've ordered a patch for for my helmet, so my brand will always be on it. Um, but ultimately. Um, yeah, this is this is my helmet and what I want to do. So it was supposed to come the reason it was so cheap is It was supposed to come with ear flaps and it didn't um, So my ears have always been on the cold side what I'd like to do is make an ear flap That connects here nuzzles into the ear here and goes here and I, I want it to snap either into these snaps or snaps that I add It will be hard probably to find the snaps that I I have um, oh, I'm missing a, ca a camera. Here we go. Oh, this is the view we like, right? So we can get the chat on there. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I would really, really like to get something that matches, fits these snaps. I don't know that that's going to be possible. I can add other snaps, um, and it will, it will do beautiful things. I don't entirely know how I'm going to make this shape. Uh, you can see it's a curve. Uh, I can sew it certainly, but to make something stiff that will hold up in there, I don't know. Ooh, you know what might work? <laughs> I 
hope I didn't throw this all away. Oh, I've been hit with an idea, y'all. I've been hit with an idea. Okay. Um, so for Christmas, I got some headphones and they came in some fancy packaging. They're good headphones. Um, but they, the, the pa fancy packaging had this foam around it that was holding it into the box in a pretty way. So, um, I can use that foam maybe to make this little cup shape here. I will look into that. That could work. Um, yeah. And so that's what I want to do to this. That's, that's this project. This is, this is a big one for me. Um, because I'm also going to add buttons to the outside of this. Um, where did my buttons go? I have them out. Maybe they're not out now. Maybe I put them away from my students last night. Um, yeah, I did. I did put them away, didn't I? Uh, it's okay. I'll pull them out again. Um, I'm going to put buttons here because th they'll be ear savers then, just like the headbands that I so often wear. Um, and I will be able to clip my mask to my helmet right here underneath the the fur cover um as i was gathering supplies for this stream <laughs> uh i realized all my felts at school um i can't believe i took literally all my felt to school but i did um whoops fortunately i have a little felt here i know this is this is nuts right this is this is kind of fun and nuts um this is my neck warmer that i made to also <laughs> You can tell it's long and it's way too warm. Like it needs to be, because I, it bunches up so much. Here we go. Let's put the hair through it first. Uh, here we are, here we are. In we go. It's way too long. So it's way too thick and I'm way too warm. And I have other neck warmers. Let's face it, like my scarf collection is extensive. Um, Lady Ferona and my mother, um, knit me or crochet me things all the time. So I made this one, I hand sewed it because I didn't have time to sew it before I left, but I did bring the fabric. Um, it's really, really a thick fleece, but I, I sewed it using a really cool yarn. I mean, it's lovely, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's like twice the length it needs to be. Uh, can you make felt out of cat hair? Yes, you can. Uh, my college roommate did that for a project. <laughs> um, you can, you can. I'm not going to do it. My skin would be so unhappy with that, so close to it all the time. Uh, so to sew this, I did this in the, in the condo out in our ski slope, and I cut the holes and then just, you know, did like a diagonal stitch of the um, yarn through it. And this is a very nice yarn because I got this yarn. They're scraps from my mother, and she was very picky about her yarn. So, and then it has a nice little design feature down here, a little tassel. So what we're going to do... Um, is we are going to we're going to cut this in half because that's all I need and we're going to use this fabric for the ear ear savers the ear uh, protectors um, I guess I should point this down huh do 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 oh here we go I hit that button I shouldn't have hit that button there we go oh wrong one do 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 look at all the colors auto and then um, this is the button I didn't want to hit but I did hit there you go. Okay. Um, so yes, you can make felt out of cat hair. I'm not doing it. Ah, I hit the button again. Is it a problem? Maybe not. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Thanks. 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 Um, so I'll just use this. If this is the project that I work on today, um, it'll be fine. I've got scraps of it. Uh, the other thing that you're probably very interested in learning about is something I call snot savers. Um, when you're out on the slope, your nose starts to run. There's nothing you can do about it, all right? It's just a fact of life. And you can't always get to tissues. Where do you throw away the tissues? Like, there's just so many complications with this. Um, and it's gross. What are you going to do? Put it on your jacket? Like, you don't want that. So I invented something, and I called it a snot saver. Um, yeah, exactly. And you're, like, covered in stuff, and, like... Yeah, and your nose is just kind of dripping all the time. So every time you're in the line, you're like grabbing a tissue and then you're hoping that there's a trash can to throw it in. It's a mess. Um, so I invented a snot saver. You wrap it on the outside. This is going to sound gross, but you're going to love it. Uh, you wrap it on the outside of your mitt or your glove. It's Velcroed and it stays there. And so it's, it's, a, it's an extreme kerchief. <laughs> 
and you can wipe your nose on it. And then when you're done skiing for the day, you take it off and you throw it in the wash. Um, it's a kerchief, okay? It just happens to be strapped to your hand so you're not leaving things behind on the mountain. Um, I made these out of felt, um, a really lightweight felt, because I thought that that would be appropriate. Um, the Velcro I used is a little on the stiffer side. I think it's more of an industrial Velcro. Um, I might switch it to ma magnets. Yeah, it's not more gross than your average linen hand. It, it's true, it's not. Um, it just happens to be on the outside of your hand the entire time you're skiing. So just don't go hugging people with it, okay? Like, COVID is real, people. Um, but I'm anticipating the runny nose from the d dry atmosphere and all that kind of stuff. So I have this cute skull pattern um, in this fabric that I really adored. Um, so I will either find this or order more of this and make one of these. I need to copy the pattern and I need to alter it a bit. It shrunk when I washed it, which I hadn't anticipated adequately. So it's a really tight fit around my mittens. Um, so this is this is some of the ski equipment I want to modify. I want to make a, several more of these so that um, I can go through them, you know, and then only do wash once a week. Um, and my friends seem to like them, so I might make a few for my friends. They're quick sew. It's basically straight with a with a folded in loop. This is the hardest part. You have to cut it and like this, fold it in, uh, pin it carefully, and then stitch. You can see that. And I need to think about, is Velcro the right tool here? I think it is. It could be magnets. It could be magnets. Um, I'm not opposed to magnets. But yeah, so these are snot savers. Uh, my friend I was skiing with out there, who is a college buddy of mine, was like, you need to like hire an Instagram influencer to wear them and like start selling them on a website because people would buy this. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, man. But whatever. <laughs> Whatever, if you want to buy it, you let me know. I'll post one on the website and I can mail it to you. Um, but it's definitely meant for like skiers and boarders. Okay, so that's uh, one project that I need to get to. And then here's the other one. I love these war these liners. So liners are important when you're skiing, if you're not a skier. Now, so I have my, it has a hole in it, so I need to fix that. I need to repair this hole. This little itty bitty hole. It's probably from me skiing in my, my ring, which I don't wear all that often because of COVID with all the hand washing, my finger starts to peel underneath and it hurts. Um, but I love these glove liners for several reasons. One, they have little grippy knobs right here, which is great. So I can put them on and I can drive with them and feel secure. Um, they're actually warm. They fit into most of my gloves and they almost perfectly fit my hands. Gloves are hard to get a good fit on. I do have a perfect pair of leather ones, but you don't wear those inside your glove when you're skiing. Now, can you see where it doesn't fit the absolute worst? Maybe. It's right here. All the other fingers, I'm right at the edge. Can you see that? Like the fingers right here. Okay, the pinky could use taking into, all right? These are designed for a man's hand. It's obvious they were men's in the men's program, but nobody ever has enough of the women's uh, equipment uh, around. So I bought a men's uh, glove liner. Um, and and it, the fingers are odd. So these two are perfect. This one's a little long. This one's wicked long. Look, I have like a full centimeter, you know, right there at the top. And I want to keep this material here because um, it, uh, it's screen compatible. So when you're out skiing and you need to text someone to let them know what lift you're at or whatever, you pull out your phone and you have to pull your glove off to do it. So you wear a liner, especially a digital one, so you can text real quick and uh, it's not a problem. Um, you have the opposite, your ring finger's too long. Yeah, that, you know, everyone's hands are a little different, but I just, this just seems odd to me. And I'd like to keep as much of this digital tech pad as possible. So I think I'm gonna seam rip up, right? And pull it down and take out from here, if that makes sense. Cause I don't think I need it here. Um, but so I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna seam rip and cut and then sew it back into here. Does that make sense? Um, and then the thumb is ridiculous. Like, look at all this. And so I can't ever use the thumb to text. It just doesn't work. This one, I'm going to do the same thing um, and pull it down. Uh, you want to hear a really... Did you know that the gloves are the only parts of an astronaut suit that are tailor-made to the person? I would believe it because our hands are so unique and they need the dexterity, right, to do the work. I would totally believe it. Um, 
So other than that, these are really great. Um, and when I was like, like yesterday, I went for like a little snow hike. It wasn't up a mountain or a hill um, or anything like that, but uh, just a, a hike in the snow. It wasn't enough to go snowshoeing, but there was like snow on the ground and I used poles because I have bad feet. Uh, but like I just needed these gloves. I didn't and then eventually I took them off actually. I didn't even need any gloves Because um, when you get moving like that it gets warm. So Yeah, I, I like the fit of these except for this I mean and I could take the pinky in too I don't know if that would give me any advantage, but it might be a good finger to practice on Because <laughs> I might need practice. So I'd like to do that to at least the right hand preferably both um I'm confident in my skills to do this, even though hands, gloves are some of the hardest things to sew. I do know that. They are looking a little worn. I've had them a few years. Oh, look, there's a hole here, too. Huh. So I will probably patch that as well. <laughs> See, that happens. You wear your equipment. They're not new, but I, I really like them, so I'm going to hold on to these. My last pair were a lot thinner. Quite warm, but um, they didn't have the digital stuff, and I need that, you know, it's just life. And I'm skiing with friends now. Like before I skied with family and it was like we'd meet up for lunch, but mostly we'd ski on our own. We were like these little independent skiers going down the mountain. I know that mountain where we go every year and um, it's my mountain, man. I know it. Like the back of my hand. I'm not going to get lost anywhere. Um, so yeah, I usually, I, I skied alone until I started bringing friends with me. And now I have lots of friends. <laughs> I love you friends. <laughs> um... Yeah. So, Dom, do you got any preference to see which project? What project is, most interests you? The engineer, I'm trying, I'll, I'll try to guess. The engineer in you, the, the dna -er, the researcher. I think the ear savers. That's, that's where I'm leaning. But the gloves, the gloves would be really technical and could be wild. Well, that's what, yeah. Um, so I'm just, I'm only planning on working on one of these three projects, um, at least this week. We'll see how far I go into that, but it might be the next couple of weeks. Um, so gloves, snot saver, or helmet ear protector thingies. I'm actually leaning towards the glove. I feel like I'll get the most use out of that right away, which is fascinating. Hmm. What do you think? Gloves? Um, in that case, I need to get some things out. Oh, and I have some other options too to make the ear savers out of. Um, I forgot to mention. I do have some like high tech, uh, like thermals fabric. Gloves or ear protectors. Okay, cool. I'm leaning in that direction as well. Um, the snot savers might be kind of boring. This is a, it's really a yellow, um, but it's a high tech sweat wicking fabric. So I was thinking about doing that for the ears, but I don't know yet. Um, maybe the inside. And then I also have this, which is just a scrap piece that was like a sample sent to me. Um, but it is kind of wild and, but it is also kind of gross looking. It looks like it's actually from the seventies. Um... <laughs> I have some brown. I did, I made a, one of my Ushanka hats out of this once. Um, it's on the thinner side. It's very soft though. It's very soft. So, but I lean towards doing it out of that purple stuff. Um, that's just where I am right now. But I'm thinking the gloves is where I am. And then I have some scraps from the hat that I could also make it out of. Uh, but I just, I try to stick tape the student so the students like to play with the fabric and they don't really want to sew it they just turn it into shapes and play with it or something it's kind of fun um so i have some fabrics it's fine fine that's hilarious i hadn't caught that they left that in that fabric um oh and then i'm also working on but i don't think i'll work on it on twitch i'm working on a macrame plant hanger um, funny story with the macrame plant hanger. I learned macrame when I was about somewhere between the ages of like eight and ten at some summer camp. And um, it, it was funny because I go to the summer camp and everyone, so, you know, I've always been an artist. There's no, no questioning as to whether I'm an artist or not. Um, let's start with the pinky. Uh, I'm gonna start with the pinky on these gloves. There's been no question that I'm an artist and have been an artist my entire life, okay? Like, you ask anyone. The, there's no question. Um, and so, do, do, do. Hmm. 
fascinating. That's going to be hard. I might just cut it off. And so, um, when I go to summer camps, I'd be put in like the little kids section and I'd be way more interested in what the big kids were doing. And the little kids are like pouring plaster and painting it. And I was like, this is boring. I've done this before. Um, and the leaders who are just basically teenagers, you know, a little bit older than I am, um, were like, no, 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 you're a little kid. You need to do this, this plaster and paint it. And I was like, okay, if I can do this and do it better than you, can I make the macrame thing? And they're like, yeah, sure. And so I did. <laughs> and they're like, okay, fine. You can make the macrame thing. And now I had to make it in half the time as everyone else. Anyways, life, life as an artist and knowing you're an artist. Oh, interesting. I wonder if, oh, I never opened these up on the inside. I bet this affects the fact that Huh, okay, so this this is supposed to be the tech-enabled thing where it transfers technology through to the um, outside of the glove, you know, your, your electrical signals or the warmth. I'm not even sure how it does that. Um, but they sewed this up over it, so no wonder I have such problems touching the screen. Oh my gosh. I always thought it was because my fingers were much too small for the fingertips. Here, we're learning things. Should have spent more time on this before I concluded that I had to sew it. I think I still will sew it because those little hangy dos are annoying. Yeah, so it's on both sides. They don't sew the tip. What were they thinking, Under Armour? I really don't know. Um, it's on both gloves. It's apparently their SOP for how to make these. Um, okay. We're going to start on the pinky. I'm going to put them on inside out and I'm going to mark with a pencil or some jazz how much smaller they could be. Marking left handed. There we go. Right there. Yes, I am tailoring a glove. I've never tailored a glove before, okay? Just so that we're clear. I have never ever tailored a glove before. And I'm trying to mark left handed. There we are. Okay, let's mark that harder. It doesn't, it's not going to take, actually, you know, when you, when you undo this, this is a half inch that I'm basically taking from the tip of the pinky finger. And I'll curve it. If, if everything goes well, I'll curve it. Yeah, like this. Cool. Can you see that? Not bad. I think. Not bad at all. Um, you could be down, huh? There we are. Captive touchscreens use the fact that your skin is slightly conductive. Right, it's electrical. So pretty much anything conductive can trigger a touchscreen regardless of whether your finger is behind it or not. Right, but it's not my field so I can't say more. Hmm, maybe I should sew some little wires in through this. Um, I won't say that these are particularly responsive uh, screen gloves, but um, we're going to test with the pinky first um, so that uh, if it goes horribly, um, it's not the important fingers. So I'm going to go in here. Oh, let's get the, the lit one right. We like this so that you guys can see a little bit more about what I'm doing. Um, and I will do my hardest so that I see it and you see it. And I'm just going to get under those threads a little bit. There we go. Can you see? Getting under that thread. Uh, I've got the fabric. I don't. You don't want to cut the fabric, of course. You just want to cut the thread. Sorry, i got to make it so that I can see more than you guys can see. Okay, here we are. See? Thread. And got it felt it go. All right, now from the other side. I don't know whose idea it was to put a light on a seam ripper, but they were brilliant. I don't know that I used, I mean, I was just using the magnifying glass. The magnifying glass is eh, ho-hum, right? Um, but the, 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 mag <laughs> the light is fantastic. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is possible to buy, as Dom suggested, um, bits of fabric for their touchscreen compatible. Um, 
I don't think they carry it at Joann's though. <laughs> Joann's so dumb. You probably you don't know what Joann's is. Probably it's a it's a it's a common craft store um, around here that's focused on sewing. But through the ages has through the years because I remember them being very very sewy focused, but um, have added more things like beading and and that kind of stuff in to their inventory. Um, and now it's almost like a home decorating store and some fabric. Like, it's, it's a shame that they went that direction. Um, it's more, yeah, it's more crafters than sewers these days. Um, it's, it's, it's where your grandma goes to shop. <laughs> you know, that, that, here in the U.S., that, that's kind of where it is. Um, we lost the two specialty fabric stores we had here in Manchester, New Hampshire that were great. One was really focused on home decorator fabrics. They had quilting and other stuff, but they were good to get resources if you needed something. Their button selection was reasonable. Um, and then we also had like this, um, I don't, it's like, it's not a seconds fabric store, but it was like a, um, mass sewing, like some kind of discard for commercial fabrics. And I really liked them. That's where I got that, uh, thermal fabric um that that that's some good stuff you that stuff you don't find at like a regular craft or sewing store um i i saw it and immediately knew what it was they didn't know what it was but i you know as i am an extreme sporter and a crafty person um i knew exactly what it was so I bought a bunch of it. I also have a really interesting like lycra spandex type material that one day I'll turn into a swimsuit or something. It's very 70s. It might be authentically 70s. But uh, yeah, we only have Joann's anymore. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. So I get a lot of stuff online. Um, in Northern Virginia, there's a cool chain of fabric stores. It's like three of them that carry great fabrics called G Street and it's where I got the the fabric for my wedding dress that my mother made because that was all silk um you just can't get the rest you, you know it's just not a thing <laughs> okay so we're gonna take that down yep get in there cut these threads Can you guys see what I'm doing? See, I just get in there and cut that one thread. You don't want to cut the thread of the fabric because that'll put a hole. There we are, see, did you see that? It kind of, there, I can see it now. It spreads and I can get in there and get more of that. Nice, pulling that thread out. So you're all done with school, aren't you, Dom? At least for now. When does school start back up for you? How much time do you have to rest? There we go. The tips of the finger are splayed apart. Um, I'm going to trim this down a smidge. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to wait until after I sew it. But I'm going to sew this to here in the first step. I am going to trim that down because that is the trim that we are making turn off my light so I don't waste the batteries. Ah, oh, my sharp scissors are downstairs. Gravy, I'll use this. Okay. My fabric scissors are downstairs. I'm going to use my roller instead. And I, I'm cutting it in straight lines, but the sewing will be rounded. All right, now for the other side. You're free until February. Now, is that the usual schedule that colleges have around you or um are they extending it to try and avoid some covid spread and stuff they're i they're still doing that around here which i think is fantastic um they should be avoiding covid spread and a long break in the winter is a good way to do that all right so here we are i'm gonna start pinning this in place and sneeze <coughs> I told you i was gonna sneeze Mm. Are you going to do something different to make the grades better? Is that, is that something you do? Uh, so I'm going to 
I'm going to pin this because this is going to get... Uh, I need a pair of scissors. I do need a pair of scissors. Uh, you know, I had just found my favorite pair of scissors. Where did I put them? I don't know. My favorite pair of scissors have a skull on them. They're nice little embroidery scissors. A friend gave them to me. Clean this up so the surface gets a little more workable. All right, so I'm gonna pin this right here. This is this is hard. This is some tiny, tiny, tiny sewing. Um, this is some really tiny sewing, actually. Gloves are hard. What was I reading? Or was I not reading? Was it a relative that was telling me a story? <sighs> Glove sewers back in the day at, in shops and manufacturing places were the highest paid sewers at warehouses. Yeah, I think it was a book. It had to have been a book. What book was I? Was it Radium Girls? I can't remember. I read a book. They were talking about how seamstress peoples, um, those that could sew gloves, made the most money. Lady Frona, we are sewing a glove. Um, it is a hand, it's a liner type thing and I need to make it a little smaller on my fingers so that the digital touch screen aspect works a little better. All the other fingers are mostly okay, but this touch screen ones are too big. So I'm testing on the pinky first, which is also just a smidge big, and I'm gonna learn how these are constructed, and then I'm gonna work on the touch screen aspect. Welcome, Lady Frona. How was, uh, you guys get any nice snow or plans for New Year's? I'm gonna stay home, you know, lower the curve, like, like a good person. But <laughs> it just rained. Yeah. We had some snow. It was it was a semi-white Christmas for us. All right, this is hard. But I, this is what I'm going to sew. Do you see this? This is going to be the first set of sewing. And I can't move on to pin the rest of it until I sew this. So we're going to get the sewing machine set up. Uh, it's going to be baby lock, not the serger. Um... Family good. We uh, we did like nothing. It was kind of nice. <laughs> um, we really did do nothing. But that's definitely a mess. And now my cord is caught on a spool of thread. So that's more fun. Here we go. All right, baby luck. Y'all haven't seen her in a while. She's been in the attic so that I can sew up there but leave the studio available for people who need to work in here. So we're going to plug her in. I think she's been serviced since the last time she was on here as well. So she should be in a good mood. There we are. She's plugged in. And yes, I'm going to stand and sew. I have figured out some ways to do this, like, seated. But it requires rearranging the studio. And I don't feel like doing that. So, we work with her really close to the edge. And we're going to move some cameras around so you can see everything I'm doing. Yeah? In before it gets stabbed. What's going to get stabbed? So, yeah, here we are. You guys can kind of see what I'm getting ready to do. Um, all right, we're going to rethread the machine. What color should I use? Something that you guys are going to be able to see while I'm working. Maybe this bright blue? That might not be a bad idea. Do, 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 findings and things. Um, I'll sew with it in a bright color so that you can can see what I'm doing. 
Aha, using needles while standing is a reliable way of getting stabbed in my experience. I get stabbed no matter what I do, so, um, you know. There is still risk I could sew through my finger, but I, I'm not too worried. Um, yeah, here's a bright blue bobbin. Nice, nice. And um, bright blue thread, so I'm going to thread her up. Nice threading. I won't teach you guys how to thread her live here today. Notice I'm not using Sergio. Sergio takes forever to thread and I don't feel like it. Um, Sergio probably isn't even the right tool for this kind of delicate sewing anyways. Now I am not going to switch up my cameras to um, so you guys can see all that fancy needlework that I sometimes show you. Um, I'm just not going to. Just so I'm clear. Expectations. I'm setting expectations. Um, I don't like how this is. There we go. Give it a nice sharp edge. Um, well, I, were you here? I don't think you were here for that, Dom, but the last, second to last sewing thing I did was sewing um, a mask by hand, um, which I did live on Twitch. Um, sewing it by hand, like not, not using a machine at all. Um, I'm not going to switch the bobbin. You guys can see two different color threads. Uh, so I did that sewing by hand standing, um, and it took me three hours. <laughs> uh, that was special. That was a special experience. Um, we're not doing that one again. You can probably find it on YouTube. Um, all right, here is, so this is a Lycra type material, kind of a spandexy thing. <laughs> I finished it. You saw the faces I made though at the screen. Oh my gosh, that was awful. Um, sewing machines are amazing. Uh, here we are. So this is what I'm gonna sew right here. Just, I'm gonna continue this line that starts here and I'm gonna sew that back in. Um, I don't know how much you're gonna be able to actually see. Okay, should I, I can move the, the needle over a smidge, keep it well gripped. Can you see anything? I mean, you can kind of see something through here. It's not going to be as good as some others, but it'll survive. All right. Now we sew forward just a smidge. Oh, what's setting? I want a tight stitch B so it's over and we're going to go forward. And then we go back to tie that knot. And I'm going to try not to sew over my needles, um, my pins rather, because um, sewing over pins gives you greater opportunity to break needles. And when you're breaking needles, you should be wearing eye protection because they do fly through the air. Oh yeah, you, you like that? I gotta make you another one too. Um, my sewing, I haven't been sewing. I haven't sewn in months. Um, there we go. And now we let it sew and we pull again our pins before we sew over them. Here we are. Taking very tiny stitches because this is a glove. There we are. Okay. Um, I think that's where I'm going with this. Now I'm going to sew backwards so it ties a knot. There we are. There we go. First stitch done. Can you see that? Um, not nearly as far as I wanted. Okay. Cool. It slid out. That's okay. We're going to curve it and it'll fit now. I don't know if you can see that. It kind of slid out. So I'm going to curve it and repin it and get the neck, get it on the next, next, next go around. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be fine. I'm not worried. It happens, especially with slippery material like this. Slippery material like this is some of the hardest to sew with. A little dark. Uh, hmm. Yeah. The machine is up higher. Um, so you don't get as much of the good lighting. Here we are. There we are. Okay. Back, make a knot, and then over. There we are. That's right where I want it. Back, make that knot, and call it done. Very good. Cool. Um, so we've now sewn that piece back on. <laughs> now we're going to do the other side of that little triangle piece that goes over the webbing of the fingers. All right, let's cut that. Maybe I should just have scissors handy. I do have scissors handy. I thought I just grabbed a pair. Where did I put them? Goodness. Ah, don't step on the pedal. 
Unless you're planning to sew. I really did just have a pair of scissors. Oh well. At least I see them in my mind. They have little red handles. Okay, we're gonna do the other side and pin it, right? Just like we did. See that? That's what we want. Okay, I'm gonna pin that in place using my smallest pins. It's also a little fuzzy because I'm so close to the camera, but that's the sewing machine's in the way. I can only do so much. Here we go. All right. And we're gonna sew up along that. And I may mark this actually, I'm looking at this. A mark might help me aim because I can see I'm going for right here. So we're going to take from here all the way to here and I'm going to aim to hit that right there. Yep, that's my goal. Wish me luck. I'm going to move it back to the center. Cool. Flatten out the backs and let's try to hit it. Gloves are very hard to sew. I've never sewn a pair of gloves. I'm just altering these so that they're better. Nope, we want to get that over. I changed my mind. Not the center anymore. Ugh, I'm going to add another pin because this thing doesn't want to stay down. Eesh. Here we go. This will help. Watch any good movies? We watched The New Matrix. What else did we watch? Uh, the Goldfinch. I've been wanting to see that since I read the book. Um, cool. There we go, right there. Put that needle down, then I can pull the pin out. And we're gonna sew that forward and back to make a knot. Back, go back, there we are. And I'm going to try to follow those lines I made, trusting in my marks. Trying not to sew over the needle, so I, or pin, so I don't break a needle. And we're going to, with the needle down, turn and twist just a little. Needle down, turn and twist just a little. Gives us a nice little curve. So twist. So twist. So and twist. Okay, I think we're good. Now we're gonna go back, make a knot, and then call it done, I think. There we are. Okay, how do I feel about that? Nin too shabby. Ooh, good. I even got it sewn into the other side. Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay. I won't be able to replicate it on the other side now. Watch. Alright, where's those red scissors? I just have them. They, they're good. They're decent ones. They're not my, my fabric ones, but they're good ones. All right, fine. I give up. Other scissors. I, it's not like I have a pocket of them over here or anything. These look sharp. I'll use these. They sound sharp, too. All right, and we're going to trim this. Yeah, I could really use my fabric scissors. It's okay. Here we go. Trimmed up. So that finger is shorter now. And now we're gonna pin this down. I'm gonna mark that um, the stitching that I ended by cutting lives right here. I need to go to, oh, it ends right here. So I need to go past that. And I'm gonna use flat head need pins for the rest. There we are. I think this is going to work beautifully. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm a little nervous. Why am I nervous? I'm going to be nervous about. Okay. If we... Nope. I want to come this way. Yep. Just like that. And it's going to pin right there, and we're going to sew forward. 
about three stitches and then back about three stitches hoping that we're catching on that thread that kind of you know I cut and we'll double check it later. I'm going to sew this part because this part of the finger is straight. Try not to sew over the pins like I just did. Straight. We're going to put that needle down and sew straight again. At least one more stitch. There we go. Straight. One more stitch. Two more stitch. Three more. Okay, this last one. Now I'm going to spin it just a bit. And we're just going to go forward one stitch. There we are. And spin it because this is the fingertip. There we are. And down again, and we're going to spin it. Take the pin out and sew across. Not bad, okay? Not the best, but not bad. We're going to sew again. Oh! Go shopping tomorrow. Woohoo! What you gonna make? Have fun, Dom. Hey, Al. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. You're just missing Dom. All right, we're gonna trim up all those threads. <laughs> Too much stuff. Yeah, I had to. I, I, my sewing machine lives in the attic right now, um, so that the the studio has enough room to move around in. And I just go and get it when I need it. Okay, we're gonna work around that and see if we can make that a little bit smoother. Hmm? There's nothing wrong with going over it twice. No one's gonna look on the inside of this glove and be like, you didn't do it cleanly or beautifully. No one. There we are. Oh, I love it. That's going to be a nice clean seam. Beautiful. So you can see that. That's a clean seam. I'm going to clean it up by cutting these threads. Just like that. Gorgeous. Gorgeousness. Okay. Gorgeousness. Clean up the extra threads because we don't need them. They will annoy me inside my glove. Trust me. There we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Right, that thread needs to go. Okay, the threads are cleaned up. Oh, I gotta get like four more subscribers or something, I think. It's true. To get affiliate, I need like four more subscribers. Okay, so we cleaned up this finger. Look at that. Oh, that finger looks better than the original. Um, actually. <laughs> um, cool. I'm so proud of myself right this moment. That finger looks better than the original. All right, I'm gonna flip this over and test it out. Let's see if it holds up. So let's, that's the, that's the pinky I just did, isn't it? Pull it out. Dude, it looks so much better than the original. This is awesome. Okay. Cool, cool. Pretty happy with this. It's hard to turn gloves inside out and outside. <laughs> Here we are, pulling that through. Okay, there's a, a hole I'm gonna have to repair. There are a lot of holes in this, actually. I wear them a lot. I just wish they worked a little better, so I thought I'd alter them. There's a, that little black pad is supposed to be the conductive part. It just seems to be leather. I don't know. All right, now how is my confidence on after having altered this pinky on my left hand? Well, look at that. Look at that pinky. You can't even tell, can you? Get in the screen. 
Yeah, buddy. You know you love it. Check out that pinky. Can you even tell? Okay, maybe since, you know, these seem to have like this itty bitty bit of fabric that goes right here and this one doesn't, but like that itty bitty bit of a fabric is like really hard to sew. So, um, I'm not doing it. Um, I could round it maybe a little more, but this is, this is a fantastic pinky. Um, that fits my hand so much better now. Can you tell? Now we got to address this one and this one. So we're going to do the left hand first just in case it gets destroyed. We're gonna turn it inside out again. Here we are. Yeah, buddy. Cool. Are y'all having fun? Taking little breaks? Any vacation time? I technically am not teaching as much, but I still have lots of work to do. I was banking stuff, was it yesterday? Oh, I went on a really great long walk though with Yasmin. It was really good. It was like an hour, 20 minutes or something like that. It was really nice. I had a lot of fun. Okay. Looking at the construction here. So they did a double stitch here. We're going to take this seam out and just kind of boop. I think that's what we're going to do. So again, seam rip. Where's the seam ripper with the light? Because I know everyone prefers that. Or at least I prefer the light. I think you guys prefer the magnifying glass, but you know, it's up to you. Here it is. Mmm, snacks, what'd you make? I love food. There we go. So we slide under there. Can you see that? Slide under and just cut that one. Just that, those little stitches, just a few stitches. Takes you pretty far. There we are. Just gotta get under that stitch. Because we don't want to actually cut the fabric. I don't have enough fabric to make holes. There we are. Not bad. Pulled apart, pulled open. Okay. Cool. I see that. And see, they stitched three pieces of fabric together at the same time. Makes sense. We're going to take it a little further down because that's how we're going to move this little black pad that's supposed to be conductive. Bean taquitos! Sounds delish. There we go. So we're pulling it here. Very good, very good. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna take this side. I'm thinking about the construction here. It's like, it's like chess in 3D. I don't know. Here we go, take that seam. Now this one. Boy, I should have more confidence in my skills. Yep. Yes, I'm, I'm working to stream regularly. Seven different days total with eight hours a month and three viewers on average. Yep. That's accurate. It's funny that they make their goals, though, impossible to do with a once a week stream. I have uh, a company to run and, and a job. It's kind of hard to stream more than once a week, but we'll see. 
Sometimes uh, it works. Certainly this summer I'll be able to get back to that, back to something like that. Um, right now the the day teaching makes it a little on the harder side. There we are as I pull open more seams. Here we are. More seam ripping. Yeah, look at that. One stitch at a time. I don't know. Can you guys see when I'm... There we are. So yeah, so if you're watching and you're not following, please follow me because I, I am only a few followers away from affiliate. Um, and as I get more followers and stuff, I'll, I'll probably stream more. But I think that's the nature of time. Um, but right now, right now it's just Wednesdays. There we are. Rip those seams out very delicately because you don't want to put a hole in the fabric. There we are. Look at that go. Yeah. All right, I'm going to flip it around. Um, here's a trick that took me until adulthood to learn with seam rippers. Um, when you're going up a seam, use the red side so you don't poke holes in your fabric. There we are. Just like that. Getting there. It is nice. I am having just a little less pain than I had previously. And that's that's kind of nice. Um, I'm able to like work out again. Worked out real hard yesterday. And uh, heavy, uh, I got to go back to lifting the day before. So that was good. So we'll get my quads ready to go skiing. I mean, they skied fine, but I could use, they could use work. They could use some strengthening. And then I'll be able to use these gloves to text people on the mountain. Yes. Here we are. Keep working that. There we go. Okay, so here's the tip pulled out. A few more stitches here. Okay, so I pulled that. What I was hoping to do was just kind of round the tip. I don't know, because this is not constructed the way I thought it was. I don't know if that's going to be possible. I see why they did this, um, where they wrapped this up, but it does decrease the amount of surface area that seems to be possible to use the touch screen with. Um, but it means there's no seam right here, right? Which could be kind of annoying. Um, I'm trying to decide if I should continue with that decision that they made, or um, I think I'm going to cut this and shorten it here. Um, I'm going to allow for a seam there. We're going to test it on the left hand. Well, I didn't make the gloves. I'm just, you know, altering the gloves. Gloves are some of the hardest and, as, you know, yeah, Lady Ferona says she's not sure she'd be comfortable making gloves. Um, and that's... I, 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 I don't think I would either. I'm altering gloves. I'm not making these from scratch. These are Under Armour glove liners that I really deeply like, have used for several years now, um, and haven't lost, so I must really like them. And um, they're good little good little gloves, but I really wish they were a little tighter on the fingers so that I could text with them on. Um, they're supposed to be tech enabled things. Um, so I can take my glove off and text with keeping the liners on. It's, it can be a huge advantage. There we are. Keep sewing. So this is the leather stitching and this thread is thicker and different. Interesting. I'll have to think about that when I sew this seam myself. Um, But yeah, uh, uh, and I want to say it was Radium Girls, but I don't know why I thought it was Radium Girls, but sewing gloves was is like the most expensive seams dressing you could do, uh, you know, factory work. Uh, and a lot of it was hand stitching, so they could even take it home and get extra, extra work, right, outside their shift. 
Um, okay. So I can see the color difference. Ooh, hair in my mouth. I can see the color difference right here. So if I, let's put the other glove on and kind of guess at how much I should have measured. Guess at how much I need to take off the finger. Right? Here we are. There we are. Cool, cool. Here we are. So, uh, it's quite a bit, actually. It's like a full pinch. Um, so it's at least a centimeter. Um, so if I just round this over, I'm thinking, um, I'm not sure just rounding over is going to work. So here's the basic shape kind of laid out flat. You can see that. Um, move this machine out of the way for a second. So you can, uh, so laid out more flat. This is the shape, right? Right behind the text. Here we are. Ah, which is, here we are. Ah, over here. Okay, got it. Oop, don't fall. Um, so I'm thinking this is going to be hard to sew. This might be hand sewn. Uh, if I shorten it here, yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do. I might have to hand sew part of this. Um, it'll work. The, there's enough stretch in this that I can do this. Okay, okay, okay. So for documentation later, if I need to look back at some video and remember how this was put together, here we are, panel on the side, panel on the side, front panel, and then this piece joins with the front panel or back panel really and wraps around. So I'm gonna take these seams out and bring this down. I can sew that with the machine. I might even be able to sew bits of this with the machine, we'll see. And then I'll take it around to the front and sew the finger back on. Um, but I am going to trim that and give myself a seam inside the glove, um, even though that'll be annoying, to get better uh, electronic transfer, conductive stuff. Um, let's try. Yep, we're going to take all this. this is, so this is some complex sewing right here. I wouldn't be surprised if this was hand sewn in the factory. But the stitching is very regular. So I don't think, I don't think it was hand sewn. Okay, these are some tough seams to get into. They're very tight. They're very, 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 very tight. I'm gonna do it from the front and pull. Not bad. Okay, I got it. Good. And I didn't hit the fabric. Thank goodness. Oh, that, that was the fabric. Okay, cool, cool. Here we are. Remember, I'm not making these gloves from scratch. The I am altering gloves, which is 10 times easier than making something from scratch. There we are. See that? Look. Okay. That's exactly what I wanted. Keep your fingers crossed for me. <laughs> are you as nervous as I am with taking apart the gloves I love so much to make them a little better? It, actually, it'll be a lot better, really. But, like... I'm just saying, like, this is nerve wracking. I suppose I can always get new glove liners and the same ones, probably. I should have checked that before I took them apart. Woohoo for taking risks, folks! Things not to do when you're doing these kinds of projects take giant risks. Here we are. I'm taking them apart, taking them apart. Ah. The things I love should be careful because I tend to take them apart, <laughs> especially if they're sewn. Okay, here we are. This, it's beginning to look a little bit like an octopus, but this is a glove. This is a glove, folks. Now we're gonna take this off. Okay, all right, here we are. Look at that, look at that. Okay, this is good. 
This is good. Now we gotta get this black thread, and I'm trying to decide which side I should approach it from. Um, this may be the most accurate, just like I did before, because I can see where the fabric puckers. Yes, look at that. Ooh, can you see that? Can you see that? Oh man, this is amazing. I have it between the threads. Look at this. You're the most exciting shot of my channel ever. I've got two stitches here in the seam ripper. Now you see why this is so, um, <laughs> so amazing. Um, yes, look, look. Are we ready? Are we ready? All right. Yeah, okay. Most exciting shot of my stream ever. <laughs> okay, here we are. Do another one. Yes, you are watching me seam rip, folks. <laughs> the thing that annoys you when you sew, you're watching me do. Um, it is kind of terrifying, and I am seeing that, yes, in fact, that second line of sewing is, in fact, actual sewn on. And I'm going to have to do this again <laughs> on the same finger. <laughs> and this is the left hand. I'm doing the left hand right now, so I, te I test it so that I can do it really, really right on the right. Okay, so here I'm seeing, let's see, what have we got some detail going on here? Let's light it up. Does this help? Um, so I just pulled this seam. That's the first seam. Do you see that? That's the seam I just pulled. Um, cool, cool. Uh, I just pulled that seam. Let's see, can we get it on camera for y'all? Is this, is this too much for y'all? Do you guys care that I'm doing this? Um, do, 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 get it in front of the camera. Where is it? Here it is. Okay, fully in front of the camera. So I pulled that seam. Yes, the excitement is overwhelming. Over here. Eh! Maybe I should have like a stand for the magnifying glass. Ooh, get one of those like jeweler thingies. Okay, it's not well lit. <laughs> okay. I'm learning things. Here we are. So I pulled that seam. And now I gotta do it from the other side because what they did was they sewed it in and folded it over. Which is what you should do on any edge fabric, really. And on any fabric, so you can, can you see that? They sewed it in and then flipped it over. I guess I'll do the same thing. Um, but it means that there's two seams to, to cut here. Cool, so there's that second one I gotta get. Now, what is the best direction to take it off of? I'm thinking it's this one again. The most dramatic shot on my stream ever. We're going to do it again. Do, do, do. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to get in here. There we are. Yes. Yes. Okay. Ooh, am I going to get two? Maybe I shouldn't get greedy. Can I do two stitches at once? It looks like it. Oh, yeah. Nicely done. Nice. And then you can see it's starting to come apart. See that? There's a hole now. Who can make seam ripping exciting? Um, again, this isn't a project that I sewed from scratch in any way, shape, or form. This is totally a glove that I love, but think can be better. Um, and I am impressed that it is going as well as it has so far. Um, I didn't really have confidence in myself to do this, but decided to do it anyways, because I'm like that. I just figured I could just show the finger shot, shot, right? Who needs fingers when you're when you're skiing? Certainly don't need them boarding, that's for sure. That's not true, because you gotta clip in and out after the lifts and stuff. There we go. There's a, there's a stitch. Let's get that. And if this fails horribly, I won't do it to the right hand, the one that I'm most likely to use. You can always patch this with some kind of other lycra that I have lying around if this doesn't work out. There we go. Then we go, come on, this one's hard. So this is where they sew the knot. So there's like, it's not quite one stitch, it's probably like three. There we go. Pulling that apart. There we go. Very nice. This is some tiny, tiny sewing.
Yes. Okay. A little more. Am I in the fabric or the stitch? Fabric or the stitch? Oh, I'm out either way. Here we go. Hoping, oh, good, it was the stitch. <laughs> okay, here's the conductive piece. It's just some kind of a leather is my best guess. It doesn't appear to have any fraying. Yeah, I'd call that, that's a leather. So this is an animal product, not vegan. Just saying. Okay, and can we unfold that piece? I don't know. I'm trying to pull all these loose threads out. Cool, cool. It's important to pull these out because they'll get caught on stuff. There we go. Cool. So now the octopus finger. Let's take a look at that construction. So that's what I just pulled off. So we're going to move it down a smidge right here. And we're going to sew it right there. Okay. I know it's a small amount, but on hands, that little bit of change that I'm making with this is going to make a huge difference in the wearability of this glove. Huge, huge difference. Cool. And remember that little difference is going to be doubled. It's going to be doubled because I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Okay. That's, that's the hard part with sewing. When you sew something, you know, you don't just sew an inch in to take an inch off of a garment because that's going to take two inches off of a garment. You have to show, sew a half inch or sometimes something awkward because maybe you're sewing in more than one spot. All right, here we are, nicely lined up. And we're going to sew. <laughs> Did you know that sewing is mostly not actually functioning on a machine? <laughs> um, here we are. Yep, 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 yep. And I'm gonna line that up. And we're gonna sew across it. I'm gonna pull the pins out a smidge so that that foot gets in there. I'm gonna straighten that foot. It's not gonna be off to the side anymore. And I'm going to attempt to get it in about the same spot as it was sewn before. Now this could be tricky because the leather, sometimes when you're sewing leather, you need to pre-preferate your holes. Um, this is a really soft leather, leather, so hopefully it's not so important here and it's gonna sew through. I am gonna widen my stitch a smidge because too tight of a sewing stitch when you're working with leather will uh, perforate kind of like old fashioned stamps um, and tear it through. The other thing is there are already holes made in this leather um, and I'm gonna sew kind of over them again. So I could be just finishing and making a straight line across uh, cutting basically, uh, but we're gonna try. There we are. Now we're going to pull that, that pin, now that that first stitch is down, and we're going to back it up. I'm a little worried I'm going over this a little too much already. Okay. Gosh, where's Kelvindor? Kelvindor does the leather working, doesn't he? There we go. Okay. What do we think? Did it work? Did it work? Try to use that blue thread so you guys can see a little bit of contrast. Um, not bad. Yeah, that, that looks good to me. Cool. Now we're going to sew, and this is the part I don't completely know how to do because of that curve. Um, I'm gonna have to work through this as I move the sewing machine out of the way. Um, so I did this. The next step, really quite technically, is probably to fold this up like this and sew a top stitch there, which means I'm gonna to switch to black thread, y'all. Uh-huh, I am. You're not gonna be able to see it. The blue is only a little contrasty anyways. You can't really see it. Um, I'm gonna to switch to black. Give a top thread. I can make the top thread glow in the dark. When are you gonna see it? It's gonna, I'm gonna be sitting there like skiing and be like, I know my glove is glowing in the dark in my mitten. Whatever. Um, I would do it. You know I would, but uh, I think black would just work. Plus that glow in the dark thread, a single thread of it, it's not a lot. It's really made for embroidery. Um, cool. 
I don't know how to do this. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Because this curve, it's going to have to curve over. <laughs> any glove makers out there? Have I attracted any glove makers to my channel? No? Okay. Cool, cool. Cosplayers? Cosplayers? Um, yep, okay. Black thread. Let's do this one step at a time. I'm getting one step ahead of me. And we're going to pull the blue thread and we're going to switch it to black. Dude, I have black somewhere. Not that one. That's a coat thread. Oh, are you going to tell me I didn't bring down any black thread? Gravy, people. Not too stiff. I uh, know that's definitely on the stiff side. Oh, here we go. I did bring some down. Thank goodness. I was worried. I was worried there for a second. Here's a black thread. Cool. And make sure your needle's in the highest position, thread it through, bring it on down, in through all the appropriate loops, in through the other loops, but they're still appropriate. Bring the needle up so you can get it in the needle. Coolness. Into the eye of the needle into the eye of the needle. Come on. Okay, it's being annoying. Wax, waxing this thread might help. There we go. Cool. Okay. Black thread. And we're going to flip this up like so. And I'm going to pin it in place. I'm going to, you know, I, I, I'm not doing as many pins as I might do if it were fabric because um, it's leather. And again, we've talked about that perforation. We want to avoid over perforating this. Um, that would be bad. Okay. So again, I'm just holding it right here so that it knows it's supposed to flip up. And a nice little top stitch will help us tell it what to do. I'm gonna put this right here. Can you see? I brought it over a little, thinking maybe this camera would pick it up a little bit more. No? It's something. We'll try it. Um, oh, does it shake like it used to? Probably does. I haven't done anything to alter shaking. Um, this camera shouldn't shake. The rest will, because they're still on the tabletop. I've come so far. Okay. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to do a trick. I'm going to start in the middle of this fabric rather than the edge, like, and sew onto it, because I can sew backwards and then forwards. Let's try it. We're gonna move that needle over, because that top stitch was so freaking close to the edge. Oop, it's not liking this. It's the tiny stitching, man, the tiny stitching. She's been recently serviced. Baby Luck has been recently serviced. There should be no problems here. None at all. We're going to trim that thread out. Perhaps the threads were getting caught on a bobbin or some jazz. Yeah. Cool. Wait, which camera's now pointed down? Oh, you. That's not what we want. There we go. <laughs> the vibrating's probably not going to work. Okay. For that camera to be the one that's close up on the... Okay, we're going to try to take it from the outside then instead of the middle. Cool, cool, okay. Cool. <laughs> the little top stitch is done. Was that exciting? Okay, top stitch. Completed. Why is it being... Oh, because I turned it the other way. I'm going to turn the sewing machine this way. She's picky. Oh, and I saw my foot on the pedal. That's why. Uh, here we go. Okay, not perfectly centered and not perfectly straight, but I'll take it. Okay.
we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> this is one of the harder parts when you're sewing, um, cause ultimately it's gonna be in a different shape than what you're, you're having to sew it in. Um, okay, that's it, that's it, that's it. Uh, how do I pin this? Um, I have the shape, I've got the shape, I've got the shape. Um, uh, mm, I've got it. Pin it here? Question mark? Gravy. I had it. For a second. For a hot second, I had it. You saw it. Because this is what I want. Right there. So let's pin that side. Maybe that's what I should do first. Let's pin here. Lining up those edges. Cool. Um, now this one. Right? Right there. Oop, it slipped. Around the edge. Because it's got a curve somehow. I guess it's not that fabric that curves, but the stitching? I have to think through this. And that's how much I'm taking off the tip. Can you see that of the finger? So that's a good centimeter. Cool. Sewing this. Also still have to sew that other side. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I should sew that side first. I think that's part of my problem. What if I could sew them all at once? That would be nice. It's conceivable, but very hard. I would need a very tiny presser foot. Let's take the other side first. Okay, we're gonna sew up like this. It is an easier stitch, so maybe it'll go better. Cool. Okay, so if I No, 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 no. Yeah, like that. So we're just gonna... I am trying to figure out how to do this. <sighs> so if I... Well, this looks right. Okay. Okay. Pin it here, because that, that looks right. Can it be done in a single stitch is the question. Would really like it to be. I don't know that I can do that curve. We're going to find out, though. Maybe my problem is, yeah, the pin should... Ordinarily, you'd want your pins perpendicular to what you were sewing. 
not parallel, but in this particular case, we're going to break that rule. And try something different to get this tiny stitching in. Because I'm having a tough time figuring it out a little bit. That's my top, and the needle should be on that side. Cool. But I don't know how that's... <laughs> that's hard. Okay, I'm thinking through sewing direction. I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna basically sew up and down and then across. I'm gonna fake a curve. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it. Here's to faking things. Um, yeah, you're in the way. We're taking you out because you're going perpendicular. Okay, the parallel path. Um, right here, and yes, this was stitched with gray, ignore it, we're going to use the black. You'll be able to see it better, and I'll be able to see it better, and I don't think it's going to make a lick of difference. Oh, ooh, I pressed on that foot a little too soon, but that's okay. All right, back it up, make that knot. I'm going to pull this a little bit, and we're just going to try to sew that straight. make a knot that didn't make a knot it's okay it's okay no judgment right um gloves are hard gloves are hard there we are and how do i have a double thread thing going on here i'm not sure cool 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 i don't know what's happening we're just gonna rethread that bit cool um and i barely sewed anything cool uh, about a centimeter. Let's um, try that again. I'm working it. I'm gonna get that. There we go. Get that thread in there. Okay, so what happened? See, I, I got this little bit done right here, but then it went off right away. I need to sew this from this direction because I can't see. That's fine. We're gonna then go this way. Changing the direction of my sewing and the direction of the needle. And we're gonna try this. And I'm gonna hand put that first stitch down so I can pull that needle out a little bit. We're gonna sew down. And then we're going to sew back, because that's how you make a knot. And I'm going to pull that pin out now. Cool. Okay, I think it's in. I think we're good. Knot made and everything. I think we're good. All right. Excellentness. It's sewn in. Very good. Now let's clean it up so I don't get confused about where things are. Okay, and did I lose my scissors again? No, they're over here. Do do do. It's working, folks. I think. Are you proud of me? I'm proud of me. Itty bitty tiny stitching. Coolness. Did it work or did it not? It. It didn't. Why didn't it sew? It like didn't sew at all. I'm cutting the threads and discovering it didn't loop around anything. Excellent. Okay, we get to do it again. Most excellent. All right, we're gonna, I don't know. It didn't work. We're gonna try a perpendicular needle here. 
Why didn't it catch for loop or what didn't it do? Okay. Oh, well, Lady Frona's proud of me though. Even if I later found out it didn't work at all. Okay, I'm gonna undo that other pinning we did because it's just getting in the way, I think. We're gonna try this again. Ready? This gives me a little something to pull. What is she getting hung up on? You hear it, right? She's hung up on something. Look at that. This is this is this is not good. All right, we'll rethread her after this. Yeah, look at all this stuff coming off the back. That's not what we want. That's going to be annoying to put our fingers into. Okay, something's off. Oh, look, I have test fabric. Which is probably why gloves are so hard, folks. The things we learn. Now we knew it was going to be hard. Yeah, it, it didn't really stitch it together, so... But I'm going to leave the stitching there because it is kind of acting like a pin at the moment. I'm just going to clean it up. A little bit of stitching. Okay. Uh, Rethread, just because something is clearly off. Whenever something's clearly off and you're not quite sure what it is, rethread. Chances are it's that. There we are. Let's try this again. Okay. I'm going to come at it from this direction. And I'm going to move it to the middle so I have more security. Rethreading, always. Probably just got out of something that it's supposed to be in. Trimming up these extra threads because we don't want these on the inside. So, Under Armour, if you're watching, I am improving your product. Um, just saying. I can give you lots of tips about improving your other products. Okay, so that happened like that. You can see that it's together. It's it's together. I'm pulling on it real hard. There's a little bloop, but it's fine. I'm pulling on it real hard because. Um, when I'm sporting with it, right? I don't want that to fall apart. Okay, we're gonna do the other side in the same spot. Pinning parallel to our seam, which is something we've learned is nice on gloves. Pinning parallel to that seam, so it stays right there. And I'm gonna sew down the middle instead of on the edge. Okay. All right. I'm going to widen that stitch one clip. Pull. And as, as the machine is pulling, I am allowing it to pull that pin out. Pull. And now I'm pull. And, and, and. Please tell me I caught it all. Oh, I did! Good job. We learned something in the last stitch. Okay. These tiny seam allowances. Got it. Nice. So now we're together on the back of the finger. We're going to rotate this over. Do, 
do 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 okay um and I'm going to sew this like this and um in a parallel again and my little glass head pins are actually thinner than my flathead pins if you haven't noticed I am gravitating towards those pin that in I need to put it down on something flat. Hold on. I am trying to accomplish something. I just happen to be bringing y'all with me. Um, here we are. Here we are. Pull that around. Pin that in like this. Parallel. Parallel. Nicely done. Nicely done. That's in there. Okay, um, and I'm probably going to cheat. Um, I think I mentioned this. <laughs> we're going to, yeah, we're going to take it this way. Follow that pin that I just put in basically is the direction we're going to stitch. And it's going to give us about two centimeters of stitching here. They must use like some kind of specialty machine. That's what I've decided that has like the smallest pressure foot. Okay, and let's go. And I want to get as much of this on here as possible. So we're gonna pull forward and turn. One stitch and turn. Right? We've done this before on the gloves already, so forward and turn. Whoop. Forward and I don't know, man. Pull that pin out now. And then we pivot. Pivot on that needle. Okay, we're gonna stop here because I'm not sure what I'm doing. We're going to sew backwards, we're going to sew forwards, it's our knot, call it done. Okay, did it work? Looks pretty good. Oh, it even looks a little curved. I think that'll be helpful. Look at that. Do you see that? Can you see that? Yeah, just a little curved. Um, leather is not at all forgiving to work with. Good God, you poke too many holes in this leather and it will just perforate like a stamp and you're done. You're just done. You're done, son. Um, nothing you can do. So... Yeah, leather is not forgiving. So we, we did, we got it up to here, and now I'm going to have to figure out how to do that piece. I don't quite know. The very, very tip of the finger. We don't want holes there. Um, but I will, I'm going to do the other side. Um, I think it might be hand sewn. Might be we hand sew that very last bit. Yeah? Yeah. Um... Yep, so we're gonna, we're gonna pin this here. Leather is not at all forgiving. I mean, you don't even get stretch from it, you know what I mean? Like, you ever wear leather pants, man? There is no stretch. I mean, there's a little bit, but it's it's not like the denim or the, the stretchy spandexy pants we're used to today. Even men's pants put spandex in them. So we're gonna basically put the pin about where we're planning to stitch. See that? So that it lines it up for us. And we're going to make that stitch happen. Okay. Hoping to keep the rest of the glove out of the way. We're gonna lay this down right here. And, yeah. Go backwards, okay, we're good. That's a knot, we'll call it a knot. And then forwards. That didn't sound good. Back, that's the knot. Cool, let's call it done. 
and okay a little messy on the back but I'm not gonna fight that one cool um, again we're just there's just this tip part that needs to probably be handsome that's, that's all I'm gonna figure there cool yeah uh, if you're thinking of learning to sew leather I would start with like sewing canvas and ducting and stuff first and then get on to leather and learn about pre-making holes and perforating the leather and and all that kind of stuff this little bit of leather is a very very soft leather it will not hold up particularly long um, if I keep sewing at it now here's the other thing that's awkward so I need to get this sewn up like this see that did you see what I did and the only way I can figure to do that is by hand. <laughs> cool. Um, let us flip this inside out and see if we're actually doing what we want. This is the left hand glove, but because it's inside out, I'm putting my right hand in it to try and help pull all this through. It only helped so much. We'll just see if we can poke it through by sticking my hand in it. And I am, I'm, I'm working on the left first, um, just to kind of learn stuff. And I may not do all the fingers on the left, um, but my right hand will probably wear out faster, takes beating, all that kind of stuff. So I want to make sure to make the fewest mistakes and extra seams and stuff on, on the left hand. Even though it is, it is the left hand that is, wait, why is that like that? Oh, I see why. It's got to go in. There we are. Inside out. Okay. Well, look at that. Done that bit better. It does, actually. And now this goes inside. And we have to hand sew this part and get this back up in there. Here, like this. See that? It goes in there. Yes. And... Yeah. So I'm going to want a little bit of an overlap, I suspect, here. Boy, I could have shortened it even more, I think. We'll see when we get it, you know, really affixed there, but that's, it's a lot tighter than it was before. Do you see that? It's a lot tighter on that finger. Look at that. Oh my goodness. The thumb is still like, woo! And I'll probably alter it too, just so it's, because it, my thumb's not that long, y'all. Who does that? Um, cool, so that's like, I need to hand sew that and hand sew this. Cool. So let's flip it back inside out. Your short thumbs. <laughs> you have, you also have like super strong nails though. So like, I'm sure it's give and take. My fingers are average, I don't know. They're average. They're actually thin around, like here. My ring size is smaller than you'd expect from a hand span, but other than that, about average. My thumbs. See, you could be doing this to your gloves. <laughs> yep, it's usually obvious when people use their hands. But you could you could be doing this, you know. For your gloves maybe your thumb the thumbs in your gloves not that you like really have much of a need for gloves <laughs> mm, it's a little warm where you are eh, you just keep doing it and the, it does and you do and you just keep doing it okay um we are going to clean this up and i'm going to hand sew this part Cool. Up like this. And I'm going to hand sew from here, or I'm going to sew on the machine from here to here. Because I want that really secure. Let's do that. 
Um, I'm more confident with my sewing than probably I should be. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> I take on projects all the time and I'm like, mm, is this gonna work? Okay. We're gonna sew that straight down. Come on. Ugh, what are you doing? Down you go. Much better. Pull that pin back a little bit. Cool. And so off. Cool. Not bad. Cool. Cool. Huh. Okay. Yeah, like that. Because I want it to go up. We'll do the same thing here. And in. And you'll notice I'm like not making full on outfits like so many people who sew who do. I'm usually altering things or, um, you know, making like equipment or that kind of stuff. It's, it's, I'm not your typical sewer, I don't think. Ooh, I lost the thread. Do you see that? Did you watch it happen? Can we get a slow mo replay of that? <laughs> All right. Here we go. This is why it's important to give yourself plenty of tail with that thread. It's sounding funny again. It feels funny too. I'm hand rolling on the side so I can figure out what's going on. We're just going to call that done, though. It's going. I don't know why. Cool. Yeah, see? It's got loopy on the back. Something's wrong with the bobbin, maybe. Cool, but we're sewn up, so it will suffice. Cool. Um, I'm not confident enough to cut that fabric. So we're just gonna go with it as it is. And, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna, while I'm thinking about it, adjust that bob and just re-put it in. Who knows why it's being funky. Could have been when I made the bobbin. Could be all kinds of reasons. But we're gonna re-put it in. See if we can fix some of our looping challenges. There we are. Now we spin it. Catch that thread back up. Go ahead, catch it. There we are. And through we go. Um, and I'm going to hand sew something real quick. <laughs> real quick. Hilarious! Alright, uh, I thought I brought down some sewing needles. Maybe. If I was smart, I did. be uh, right back. I am going to get some hand sewing needles. I know right, right, right where they are. All right, I will be right back. Be right back. Getting tools. Be right back.
you can probably hear me. Even if you can't see me, I'm back. <laughs> I got some needles. Um, also a package came in It's a new phone case. I got a new phone because don't get the Samsung uh, cover X cover pro. Just don't do it. Um, why you might ask? Because, trust me, so many reasons. It's not as indestructible as they say it is. Trust me. And um, I've had it less than a year and it already has like dead pixels. A whole line of dead pixels. Don't do it. So now I'm on the pixel again, which I much preferred. It was also slow the whole time I had it and like took forever to start up the camera app. And you know, with all the Instagramming and stuff that I do, that is not okay. So let's um, pull a little thread out, trim it down. I'm not going to double up this thread because this is a glove and gloves require um, extra. We, we, we don't want the extra bulk in the glove. I'm gonna have to be a little more precise than other things I've done. Who is the rocket launch music? You know, trying to be super inspirational and stuff. I usually double up my thread, honestly. Like, that is really what I do. Um, but not in this case. I'm gonna tie a knot. Don't think it's gonna really help me all that much in this particular case because I think that knit is just gonna pull right through. But I'll do it anyways. And I'm going to sew this to this. This and this and this and this, okay. And I'm gonna come at it from this way so that the knot ends up on the side of my finger and not in the pad, okay. Um, and I'm gonna switch to a view that makes y'all a little more excited. Not that one. Ah! Where'd it go? This one. But I lost one. Which camera did I lose? This one. Why did I lose you? Okay. I don't know. And it used to be... The... <laughs> what did I do? Oh, there we are. This one. Sorry, there's lots of views here that I've built. Okay, so we're gonna pull through here and then I'm going to not quite pull to the knot and I'm gonna come back around to this side, make a little stitch and pull it back here and then I'm gonna tie a knot. Just like that and that, that's gonna be how we, we put this together. one stitch will be a knot in of itself and we'll tie it back and we're gonna do one more like that but I won't do it from the needle side I will do it from the tail side cool there we go knotted on and I'm just gonna do a bunch of tiny stitches as if it were a sewing machine essentially popping through that leather which is of course harder to press through than a normal fabric but still very important because I need that touchscreen compat compatibility there we are Look at that, just like that. Cool, back and forth. That's all I'm trying to do. And I, but I want it tight because they, I do want warmth from this. I don't want to have giant drafts going at the edge of my fingers or the tips or whatever. That would be a no-go. I want to keep my stitching, stitching very, very tight. And I may take it in and then, um, 
Yeah, actually, I probably will do this. So I'm doing a, a just a standard straight stitch. I don't know, it probably has a name. Um, you know, just a straight, normal stitch. And then I will trim down the fabric and go back with like a looping kind of chain thing that goes over the edge. So I make sure I get that real tight without any lost gaps or anything like that, because that would be bad. We don't need that in our lives. But only after I get it sewn in for that first looping. Almost there. Just like that. And in you go. Cool. Like this. So exciting to watch me hand sew, right? Ooh, ooh. Hope you're learning something, though. I don't know. Here we are. I do have over here that I forgot about this little these travel scissors. And I can trim some threads down. They're quite nice and narrow, which is super helpful. So I can really get in there and clean up some of these extra flyaways. But they just don't need messing with me right now. Cool. That helps. And in we go. Almost there. I'm going to overlap with some of that machine stitching because I want to make sure my hand stitching has good grounding on it, basically. Cool. And so that side of the finger is pretty much closed, so I'm going to trim that extra fabric and wrap around the edge. And wish I had my really sharp scissors. There you go, you can see it. Cool, and I just accidentally cut the thread. Excellent. Cool. Um, we're just going to leave it in there and um, remember to knot it next time before we start trimming things. But I'm going to do that wrapped edge so it won't really matter. A knot just to be on the safe side, but I'll really tie to it and that'll make the difference. Um, can't believe I did that. No, I can totally believe I did that because I know who I am. Um, so it's just going to be an edge wrap type stitch. And I'm going to tie, oh, actually that knot is holding. So we're just going to wrap and wrap and wrap. See that? All right, let's pull all these extra threads away that you are now considered cool and wrap around just like that I'm just gonna wrap and then give it a nice tight clean edge almost more like I manufactured something um, sergers often do this kind of stitch you know automatically but I am not confident with my serger skills to do something this tiny at all. Oh, it's 340. Oh, 348. Okay, got it. I do have teaching tonight, but not uh, not in the 3 o'clock hour, so we're good. Not even in the 4 o'clock hour. But, you know, good stuff. Here we are. Keep going. Keep wrapping around those edges. Keep going. Mm. 
And there we go, wrap it around, get it nice and tight. And this extra stitching will be our primary stitching actually now because I screwed up, but that's okay. Over engineer everything. Do it, you'll be happier for it. You'll be much happier for it. And your projects will hold together. There might be some extra bulk, but you know, you'll have made up for it with all your ingenuity. Surely. Just like that. Wrapping around, wrapping around. I'm sure it has a name. Chain stitch or something, I don't know. Actually, the other one's probably the chain stitch. I'm gonna trim that just a smidge. It'll be really nicely done. Coolness. And I'm going to tie knot. I uh, haven't like watched a bunch of sewing YouTubers or anything, so I don't know if these are techniques or whatever. I just do them because they work, and I've been doing them for some time. But I see how that just cleaned up all those loose threads and stuff. Um, that wrap around on the edge really helps. Really, really helps. There we go. We got a nice, nice knot right here. And we'll trim that up. Okay. And now we're going to do the other side. You ready for that? I am. I'll at least be able to use my phone with my left hand. Things you didn't know you needed. The ability to use your phone with your left hand. Or not. Now let's do the other side of the finger. See that? It's just that little bit that I need to get. Right? But it's in a dur it's in a spot that needs to be durable. It's in a vulnerable spot because it's the tip of the finger, right? So we're gonna try and do that. With that back and forth stitch. I used on the other side first. Well, then we'll trim it up without cutting the thread this time and do the little wrap around edge just like before. All the things you're learning, right? And seeing, and you get to see it twice. Oops. So, I have my tail and my needle pulled through. Ooh, Lady Ferona's gonna make some birdhouses. That sounds exciting. More homes for the birds. Are you gonna paint them pretty colors? There we are. It's good to hear that y'all are making stuff. I always appreciate that. The world needs more people that make stuff. You can always post your pictures on Instagram and tag me or send them to me and I'll take a look at them. I always love that. I know you post a lot to Instagram, Lady Frona. Ooh, 
We are all makers, aren't we? We gotta make stuff. It's just who we are. You can see my stitching over here. It's not super even. I wouldn't call myself a super stitcher by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just doing it. There we go. It's a little bulky here, but we'll get through it. We will get through it. Ah! Excellent. How are they, Alp? Are they everything you ever wanted in a macaroon? There we are. Okay, so without cutting the thread this time, we're going to trim that up. Oh, I almost cut it. Did you see that? There we go. Trimmed nicely. And now I'm going to do that wraparound thing I did before. Because it just cleans it up on the inside. And I think in a glove, that's going to be super important. Yeah, like I just, I don't want to cut that thread. It could be important. So we're just going to loop around it and call it a thing. have a thimble to help press through this. I'll be alright without it. I don't typically wear a thimble when I'm sewing, not even by hand. But this kind of looping around the edge really helps clean it up on the inside. It helps provide some really even stitching. Yeah. yeah, just like this. Nice little even stitches. We don't want a draft coming into these fingers. My fingers get so cold, especially when I'm skiing. Got that Raynaud stuff. Beautiful. Lovely. Nice even stitching. Look at that. Do you see that? That is some even stitching. I didn't expect, I mean I should have expected, but I didn't expect so much hand sewing for this project. I should have. If I thought about it, I would have realized. If I thought about it even a little bit, I would have realized there'd be Plenty of hand stitching in this. Yeah, look at this. Nicely done. I think we're to the point. There we go, I accidentally picked that up. Um, last loop. And um, I'm going to tie a little knot. Again, got to take a beat and remember these are active, active gloves. So you got to get that really nicely cut in there and trimmed up. Let's let's do a fitting. Are we ready for a fitting? I think we're ready for a fitting. I haven't done the thumb yet. <laughs> you like them? Yeah, macaroons use almond flour, don't they? Mm. There we are. Okay, the thumb that we didn't alter. There we are. Just like this. Yes, Lady Frona is a very good cook. We knew this. This is known. This is a known thing. She like hand makes most of her stuff. Like grinds the flour herself sometimes, I'm sure. There we are. Okay, fitting. <laughs> I love it. It fits the finger. Look, it fits. 
Do you love it? It fits. It's actually, it's actually perfect. <laughs> Gosh, I love customizing things. It's like bespokeness. All right. So what I'm going to do next is we need to sew this. I'm of half a mind. I am. I'm of half a mind to do it while it's on the finger. Mm. Here, I'm going to I'm going to poke myself. This is going to hurt. I don't see a way of doing this without hurting me. I'm going to put it here cuz this is this is exactly where I want it, right? So with that knowledge Don't poke, don't poke. Okay, okay. Okay. Hey, I did it, and I didn't poke myself. That's exactly where I want it. I pinned it there. How do I do this? Okay. And we're going to take that needle and thread. We're going to tie a knot. Tiny one. like that uh, didn't quite land on itself triple knot then there we are and we're gonna bring the needle up and through the hand and sew it from the front front but collecting the knot in the back. I think I can do this. Yeah, totally. Here we go. Let's move this forward so I don't have to pull it back so much. Okay, where's that needle? Okay, we're coming out here. I need to move it back and back okay we're almost there almost right where I want it perfect you see where it's coming out okay and we're gonna pull Ugh, and I pulled the needle out of the thread again it's okay get that thread through the needle Ugh, I need to trim it Just like this and through awesome now we're gonna do the same rolling stitch that we did on the edge um, because I think it's kind of tidy and I think it'll prevent some rolling that might happen at the edge of this leather yeah see that Well, the first stitch might be a little on the messy, but we'll we'll get it tighter. There we are. Because I don't want that to roll down, and I want it to be warm. I'm gonna press down. Basically, I'm I'm pressing down right behind the fabric. Oh, can you see that? I'm pressing down right behind the fabric, and then I'm bringing it up. and hoping to catch just the edge of that leather. Oh, I just caught the pin. That's okay. There we are. And then I do the diagonals on the back and the straight forward because I'm, I'm anticipating that the motion that might rub up against this fingertip is going to be up and down the most. So I want that thread to follow that motion so it doesn't catch all the time. There's diagonal on the inside. I don't know. I'm making stuff up as a guess as to what will be best. It really is. Mm. 
nicely sewn in there. Yeah, just like that. All right, I'm gonna pull that pin out and we're gonna finish it. And try not to catch the back, because that would be bad. I just had that thought that maybe I had caught the back already. Cool, and around we go. Keep it up. I don't think I've caught the back yet. gloves are quite fantastic. This is gonna be everything I need. I can now use my phone with my left hand while wearing my gloves. <laughs> Fingerprint sensor won't work though. It doesn't work with the screen protector I have on it though. Any tips or tricks? I like upped the sensitivity of the screen. I like did a bunch of stuff um, and it's just not working. Um, it's one of those fingerprint readers on the screen and not the back of the phone, so there's that. All right, I don't know that I'm going to bring this around and tie the knot on the other side. Probably should. I should just do it. All right, just do it. Bring it around and try to figure out how to turn this glove inside out Ooh, without stabbing myself. Oop, I already pulled the thread through. Look at that. See, that's what I was worried about. Okay. I'm touching the needle. Ooh, I was about to say I did it without poking myself, but then the, the needle slipped out of my hand and I'm not convinced anymore. Okay, okay. All right, I think I've done it now without poking myself. All right, let's use that to pull that piece through and we'll tie a nice little tidy knot right here. And we'll pull it through to the other side so it's not where my finger rubs. Um, just like that. And let's tie a knot. There we are. Look at that. Nice knot. We'll do another one. Double knot. Sometimes things fail. When I'm doing this kind of rappy wrap knot, I don't know, I saw it, I think, on someone's YouTube channel. And I was like, ooh, I should try that. Why don't I know this as a way to work? Actually, it was someone who was, I was trying to repair a hole in a sweater. I did repair the hole in the sweater. It's not the prettiest repair. I would not want to put that on Twitch. Um, I, I may attempt to redo it. <laughs> I may pull it apart and do it different, sec you know, the second time do it better, whatever. Oh, look at that! Okay. Nice and trimmed up so we can trim off the excess fabric. And then we're going to put it to the ultimate test. So I'm going to trim that. Ultimate test! No, not skiing. Using my phone. There we are. Fingers where they belong. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. Look at that finger in there like it's going to use a digital screen. Um, let's see. Anything sensitive y'all shouldn't see? Maybe I'll just put it on Twitch so you guys can see me stream. Um, I think I, I have Twitch like installed because it, it alerts me to things. Where's that nice little purple icon? There we go. So I can, uh... oh, my, my stream manager? No, you guys don't want to see that. Oh, no, what are you guys, here, my Instagram. Okay, using, look, it's a new fee. It's adorable. Ooh, donuts. Excellent, from Wild Orchard. Oh yeah, look, it's, it's, it's working so much better. I can't even, look, you can see new fees. This is good. This is useful. This is wonderful. Let's let's try for some buttons. Oh my gosh, search. Yeah, the buttons are working. Look, it's a St. Bernard. It's adorable. Okay. Um, 
that works. So we're going to do it to the right hand and to the thumb because right now the thumb is bothering me. Um, we're going to do the same thing we did to this hand to this hand. Um, but maybe not today because it is four o'clock. Um, let's see. Let's look at my schedule for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, you know, it is, it's, it's the break week. So maybe I'll come back tomorrow. Would you like that? Would you guys want me to come back tomorrow? Let's look at my schedule. Uh, I'm looking, turn off all these extra calendars. Yeah, I'll, I'll stream tomorrow. How would you guys like that? Would you guys like me to stream tomorrow? I will stream tomorrow. Um, about the same time and I will do the other pieces of this and I figured out a lot. So I think, I think it'll go better. Um, cool. Yeah, <laughs> that might, that might be fun. Um, have a little extra streaming. Lady Frona and, and Alp say I need to stream more so that you guys see me more um, and I get closer to affiliate. Um, of course, am I going to be able to do it <laughs> in this month? No. <laughs> no, we have, what, two days left? Um, unlikely to happen as I have threads all over me. Um, but, you know, this is this is nice. So I can show you um, the difference between the two hands now that we've done one finger and the one digital finger and the pinky. Um, just, you know, kind of take a look at these fingers um, and see that this finger is like all up in there and it's nice and tight, whereas this finger is very, has plenty of wiggle room. Look at that. And this finger's tight. I would take it tighter, I think, on this hand. Um, we'll go maybe a full half inch or something. A little bit more than that centimeter. I know I'm switching units. Don't hate. Um, and then I'll also probably stitch that up because we don't want that hole there. Um, that hole. It's funny that the left hand has more holes in it than the right hand does. Um, that's the ring, I'm sure, but I don't know what that is. I don't know. Um, the pinky looks a little funny. We could even probably have gone smaller on that one. But you know what? It's good. Um, it's not as nice perhaps as say you know this pinky but it's the same basic concept like if you look at those same idea just different placement um way better i can i can yeah that's way better um so i'm gonna do the other hand tomorrow is that what you guys want to see <laughs> um or i can work on the ear pieces because i gotta get all this done before i go on a big ski trip um if you have preferences, let me know. You can, you can comment it here now or, or follow me on Instagram and message me there. Um, that could be a good place for you to message me. Um, I'm really easy to get on Instagram. I'm just always on it because the, there are puppies on Instagram. Do you know there are puppies on Instagram? Uh, yeah, there are puppies on Instagram. Um, I've got some good Instagram stuff coming up soon. More kids doing beautiful things. Um, I, there's some, some really there's some, so, so the bouncy balls, right? You, you're, 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 so you're here now. So you you get the inside scoop on my Instagram. The stuff the kids are making right now that you can see on Instagram is going to be a bouncy ball. Um, you're going to see it tomorrow. It's a really adorable video with them bouncing balls uh, that they made. They literally made it. And uh, there's this one kid in the class that just gets so excited about every little thing that she makes. So she's definitely going to be one of us. You know, one of those people that just constantly makes because she gets so excited when she makes stuff. Um, so I would encourage you to follow me.